Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk. Now you may or may not remember Right the Hand, and I've recently stumbled across one of his videos in which he explains that atoms don't exist. As you see here, we have the solar system, right? You know, very uh, unique looking object here. And then you have this very unique looking object, which is an atom, apparently. Now, the basis of the atom and the basis of the solar system are the same principle. It is a large something in the middle with other things orbiting around it, okay? This is how you know they are both bullshit. That, my friend, is a non sequitur. This thing is orbiting something, therefore it's bullshit. And then we get our first look at actual atoms, which look like balls. It looks like braille. This is the achievement of man for the 1984 taking a picture of this. They move them, they said. Uh, they arrange them to spell IBMO, and there just happened to be one off in the distance there. Does that look anything like a nucleus with electrons moving around it? No, it doesn't. And why doesn't it? Because it's not. So it's very clear here that right the hand does not know what the fuck he's talking about. If he had have taken a second to look into the imaging technique that was used to take this image, then he would have realized, oh, we wouldn't expect to see protons, neutrons, and electrons. So in case you're wondering, a scanning tunneling microscope was used to take these images. So the simple explanation for how this works is it's essentially a tip that moves along a surface, right? And it has a voltage that's being applied. If it detects a difference in the voltage, like what you'd expect if it encounters an atom, then it will register it and map it out. It's kind of like if you were mapping out a surface, yet the object that you're using to map out that surface was magnetic, and you came into contact with a strong magnetic field which repelled the magnet that you're using. You would register a bump there, even though there's no physical bump in the surface. And this all ties into quantum mechanics, because if you do a Google search, which I did here for quantum mechanics, you get shit that is very similar to the atom because it's based on subatomic particles. And if atoms are fake, then subatoms are fake as well. Did this motherfucker just seriously call subatomic particles subatoms? For fuck's sake. By the way, right the hand, quantum mechanics has to deal with very tiny stuff. So of course atoms are going to have something to do with quantum mechanics, but even if atoms were fake, that wouldn't disprove quantum mechanics because there's a whole lot of other things that quantum mechanics deals with besides atoms. That's very much like saying that no place in the southern hemisphere exists because Australia doesn't exist. And because I can prove that Australia doesn't exist, that means that New Zealand doesn't exist, that means that South Africa doesn't exist, that means that South America doesn't exist. Boom! But most importantly, it means that the ice wall doesn't exist, so therefore all the water would flow off the edge, so checkmate, flat earthers. But you know, things like quantum tunneling, quantum superpositions, and quantum entanglement, they're all part of quantum mechanics. Okay, and how did they discover these uh, electrons and atoms? Well, look at this. This is it. They took a beam of light or a laser or whatever, and they shot it at this special material, and they got this. This is the actual experimental uh, data. This fucking picture here of, I don't know, what do you do? What do you, you're, they look at that, and they say, oh yeah, atoms and electrons. I can look at that, and it looks like, a, I don't know, looks like something exploding. To me, it kind of looks like right the hand's brain exploding. Might just be a little bit too big for that, though. But here's the really neat thing. If right the hand had have just done the tiniest bit of research, he would have found that that data wasn't to show that atoms exist. It was to show that isotopes exist. Although the person behind the experiment, J.J. Thompson, and much like Foucault, we're talking about the scientist, not the philosopher here, is also credited with discovering the electron. So maybe that's where right the hand got confused. I think he got confused with all of it, though. You could do, and then put, oh, an E20, CO2+, plus, like this, this right here is the basis of quantum mechanics. This fucking picture, dude. Our survey said... 
Firstly, you're using a photo that has to do with isotopes. Secondly, the basis of quantum mechanics is more to do with things like the double slit experiment. They base everything they know on this picture. They created some sort of material and then sh created a laser and then shot the laser that they made at the material they made and they got this pattern and then from that they extrapolated quantum mechanics. <laughs> so it turns out that Right the hand doesn't just invent new words when it comes to his typing like ooh called it, he invents new words like extrapolated. <laughs> and then from that they extrapolated quantum mechanics. So it sounds like in Right the Hand's universe, population 0.5, they created an experiment which sounds suspiciously like Rutherford's gold foil experiment, except it's actually this experiment that Right the Hand is showing on screen and they use that to create the standard model of the atom and then they created quantum mechanics for some reason because profit? Look, right the hand doesn't understand this so obviously he's correct. This is not a scientific experiment. They did not observe the phenomenon of a laser that they created. They are not using sunlight. They are assuming that whatever light they have created will behave in the same manner as sunlight. What? Why is he bringing up sunlight? What does sunlight have to do with any of this? Where in this does it mention, oh, um, sunlight proves atoms? He's just making shit up. Also, there's no reason to think that light from the sun acts in a different way as to light created by a light bulb. There is no reason to think that. Unless you can show me how they could be different, then we can assume that light from the sun is the same sort of light as light from a light bulb. Light is created by its source, and sunlight, the source of that, is way above the atmosphere. As I said, it's that interdimensional portal yeah. that creates some sort of electromagnetic energy yeah, that illuminates the noble gases within its presence. Perfect. And within, when it's yeah. in its presence, it illuminates them instantly. If you're creating an electrical source of light because of the heat illuminating, say, an electrical battery powered torch or something then that light sort of travels but same as like a laser because you're creating it artificially nobody asked you flat earth aussie jesus also you haven't actually shown this to be the case so and on top of that you're not even observing a phenomenon you're manifesting it inside of the apparatus much in the way that cavendish manifests gravity this laser light bullshit is the quantum mechanics equivalent of cavendish for gravity god damn it he's using the quantum eraser version of an experiment which i guess means that we can discount all medicine because you know medicine if it's not based on a natural occurring phenomenon then i guess it's not science and then they oh that doubles but they say that an observation will change the outcome of the experiment are you fucking kidding me you're telling me a tree falls different if people are looking at it this is the biggest load of bullshit i've ever heard in my life and people are gobbling it up people that swear they are scientific intelligent people are gobbling up the fact that they can change the outcome of an event by looking at it you know you said the scientifically minded people are believing this it's probably because they understand it way better than you do because an observation in quantum mechanics is very different to observing a tree fall over my advice is don't learn about quantum mechanics from deepak chopra okay so this this is what they did i guess the people were getting a little restless you know the technology was progressing and nobody was seeing these atoms any better so they said look we took a picture of a strontium atom, all right? And they showed us this. Now, this apparatus here, you can see, you can clearly see the wires and the screws. Like, this is not a, a microscopic apparatus, okay? So, like, the, the tips of these things are probably the as big as, I would say, like, uh, a mechanical pencil lead. Those two points with the uh, space in between it there, okay? That's what's housing the strontium atom, okay? These two graphite... Uh, large pieces of metal 
uh, are creating some sort of electromagnetic housing or whatever it's doing, some bullshit they're telling you. And let's see, can we get a look? Can we, can we zoom in a little bit and see this strontium atom? Holy moly, there it is. Can you believe it? This thing, which is supposed to be the smallest particle in the world, it looks like it's about the size of a grain of sand. They want you to believe this. Oh, but that's just the light bouncing. Oh, just shove it up your ass, bro. It's horse shit. Nobody's buying this. Well, people are, but I am not. So you're right. That isn't the size of a strontium atom. But in other news, check out this really huge torch that my phone has. It's absolutely massive. So if you look into this, you'll find that the strontium atom is absorbing and re-emitting light. And, you know, there's something else that I can show you that is emitting light that looks bigger than what it actually is. And just because you don't understand it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Oh, and right the hand. If you're watching this, please to explain to me how if atoms don't exist or our understanding of atomic particles is completely wrong, then how the fuck do we know how to produce nuclear energy? Because nuclear energy makes up for tw nearly 20% of electricity generated in the United States. And that's just one example of our understanding of atoms being useful in the modern world. Another example would be, uh, I don't know, the entire field of chemistry. I don't know, maybe you failed that class, so... But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know, do you think atoms are fake now, or is right the hand just bullshitting? As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Fight the Flat Earth, Stan Trucker, What Jesus, Robert Legier 3, and Wolfie. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon, the link will be in the description. Also, there's been a small delay, but Flurifia isn't too far away, so keep an eye out for that. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.